All right. We really just wanted to make an entrance for our last panel. You know, but it's, I haven't had anything to do this weekend, so I was out running a show. So sorry I'm late. Um, still working on the slideshow, so we're going to do that uh, a little bit special, different way because it was taking way too long to export 24 videos. Um, so it took a long time. Anyhow, this is the last panel, and it is my fault. So it has been a long road, um, it's been fun, it's been a lot of work, but before we get to all the tears and all that stuff, we still want to show you some things that we have. So we told you there'll be a surprise, it's not the surprise you're thinking, but uh, let's go. So we already know that we have, can you get the, catch the lights if you'll hit four? All right, that better? All right, so we already know that uh, we have some fourth quarter exclusives coming. And maybe we don't. Yeah, how about slide? Arrow down. Oh, come on. That's what happens when you use a Microsoft product. Ooh, oh. Yes. No. <laughs> it's no. There's no way he's as frustrated as you are. program. We already know we have some exclusives coming this fall, so they're, they are uh, working on them now. So we've got the Cobra Night Stalkers, and uh, Dave, uh, your landing want to say anything about these? I know it took us a long time, we kept saying these are coming, these are coming, these are coming, but we finally got them done. Yes, these are based on the 2007 uh, convention exclusive uh, female troopers, they were shock troops that year, and of course in the FSS released the uh, Night Stalkers officer, so we wanted to give her some troops, and that's what we announced at last JoCon, that we'd be doing the three-pack in the same uh, body style that we did the blue Cobra female trooper three-pack, uh, but this time we're going to add some ethnicity to it, so there is an example of the uh, different uh, hair color and ethnicities that will be included in the uh, three-figure pack. And to, to close out the fourth quarter, um, you know, the window was short for us and we wanted to try to get as many figures in in the special teams as possible. And the one that we did, of course, uh, previously that took us a long time was the Heart Wrencher with the Dreadnought uh, Ground Assault Vehicle. We would have loved to continue that, but the only other one that we could fit in the schedule would be do a redeco of a vehicle that included Zartan and his Ninja Force uh, style punk rocker look with the mohawk and everything. And we wanted to add him to the mix so that gives you a little bit closer to your Ninja Force collection. And that also uh, might also give you kind of a hint where that uh, what was that FSS8 uh, hint was for the 13th figure, what that now may be narrowed down to. So there you go. All right, so after we got these going, we counted the mugs and we said, hey, Daryl, is there any way we could maybe do, fill a few more holes in people's collections before the end of the year? And he said, Mel, can you ship them? Well, theoretically we can. So at least the manufacturer is telling me that at this point. So we'll see what happens. But they love to tell stories. Um, so what we have come up with is what we are calling the final 12. Okay. So these are the last three and three quarter inch exclusives for the club. Now, this is not an FSS. 
okay, because we didn't have time to spin it out that way. But they will, they will be two packs. So when you pre-order them, you can pre-order the two packs that we have packed together and they'll come in the same style of FSS box, okay? Look the same, smell the same, taste the same, order totally differently. Like chicken. Okay. Like chicken. It's all chicken or alligator. So anyway, so I'm going to let Dave and Lanny talk about the final 12 because it's a little mixture of a lot of different things. And a new thing, too. So yes, we worked with Daryl. We gave him a, a list of possible figures that would fill in some of the uh, previous sub-teams that were released through either the FSS or our convention sets. And we brainstormed with him what would be the best... Uh, Can I do the slide? Yeah. The best Redeco version. So yes, we heard you, and you were all wondering why uh, Barbecue, even though he was in the comic, wasn't included in the convention set. Well, of course, we ran out of slots, but we wanted to make sure he was included. So he will be the... Uh, not necessarily number one, but he is in the uh, the final 12 lineup, and he's in his original Sergeant Slaughter's Marauders uh, uniform deco, so he will match with his teammates in the, this year's convention box set, as well as his uh, his stand will be brown, matching the same color as the uh, box set stands. And his partner. So, again, yes, we heard you. You wanted low light, so again, uh, the possible redeco of low light matching his Slaughter's Marauders brethren. We have him in his uh, classic uniform colors and his gear that um, will make him an added team member to your uh, displays. So again, these will come packed together, okay? So you'll see either a buddy, another person from the team, or an adversary that comes in the two packs. So the next ones are... Oh! I, ever since we did the three and three quarter adventure team, single figures with the packed out with vehicles, I always wanted to do another three and three quarter adventure team figure. And so we decided that we would do what in the old days would have been called Black Widow Rendezvous, but because of legal things is now called Black Spider Rendezvous. And he has a new character. Now, this is inspired by uh, Todd and Dave, and they've always been or had a running joke of a Cobra uh, operative whose name was Coils O'Doom. Okay? <laughs> so we felt like it was only you know, proper that we you know, create Coils O'Doom before we could uh, you know, finish up the whole set. So he'll be a new figure, and he'll have an interesting file card for you. And you remember from a previous convention set, Crimson asked. Yes. There's a connection. And he does have the Mars logo, so. So yes, I, my Easter egg hatch. So most of you that got the, the June issue of the magazine got a little preview that there could possibly be a uh, Sonic Fighters uniformed Dodger and he is going to be part of the final 12. So he can join the figures that we released here at the convention, so you're going to get closer to some of the uh, full team members of Sonic Fighters. Hi, Jerry. And he needs someone to fight. So we have an adversary for Dodger, and that is the uh, Cobra Viper in the Sonic Fighter colors. So again, uh, much like his uh, carded figures in this year's convention, his souvenirs, um, the sound effects will have to be uh, included by you, they won't be in the package. <laughs> so again, we want to continue to fill in some of the Sonic Fighters that were uh, unique uniformed characters. So we heard a lot of uh, interest in Lieutenant Falcon getting an updated uniform and we wanted to give him a little flair in uh, uniform deco and so we looked at the uh, Super Sonic Fighter version but we're including him in with his uh, just general Sonic Fighter motif. And of course, Lieutenant Falcon needs an adversary so his uh, two-pack partner will be the Sonic Fighter Road Pig. Yeah! 
So, security, <laughs> Christopher, settle down. Somebody take, take it outside, Chris. <laughs> For those of you aware, they did a European version of uh, Hit and Run in Tiger Force. So we've got him here in his... Uh, There, there's half the sale on the run right there. He's gonna get. You better pre-order that early. <laughs> He's got his unique uh, Tiger Force uh, deco from the European mission, and we did include some camo on his face to give him a, a kind of a modern era update. <laughs> Love you more. <laughs> It's, it's okay, son. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. So again, going into the uh, European area of Tiger Force, we needed another operative to uh, fill out that team, and that is Psych. So we got uh, the Tiger Force Psych out here with his uh, unique European uniform. If, does anybody have an adults depends they can hand over? To <laughs> I know what's coming next. James has got one. James, okay, good. Yeah! Well, we've got a trifecta now, so here is the European Tiger Force Tunnel Rat. In, in case you're wondering, he's in a beetle position on the floor. That's, uh... You got that depends yet? <laughs> and there we go, rounding it out. Uh, the four figures that uh, will fill in Tiger Force are the European team members, so that is going to be Blizzard in his Tiger Force uniform. There's literal tears coming out of his eyes. We've made another grown man cry. Most excellent. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go through some of the years. So this is where? 1994. Intrepid. Intrepid, New York City. <laughs> Just know in this slideshow you're going to see people that are younger. I think Ace was six. Thinner <laughs> and had more hair. Who are you talking about? Not me. Because <laughs> I look the same. There it is. That was the intrepid. Alright, so next year we went, well, next year was what? Wasn't us yet. Where'd we go? Chicago! Chicago. Chicago. And we didn't have any pictures that anybody sent in from this. We did the best we could from what we got sent in, but as we get later, there's more pictures in each year. All right, so after Chicago was? Florida. Florida. Maybe not. There we go. And some statue action going there. This was really the first gathering of what Daryl has you know, deemed the G.I. Joe Legends. Or that, that when we started having people, we called them Joe Liberties. John Nicklig and... Yeah. Barry Kay. Yeah. All right, and Barry Kay's been around. That's right. So, uh, after Florida was... We're watching to PA. Eh, thanks for playing. <laughs> All right. San Jose. This was our first show. <clears throat> so as a staff and a lot of the conventions you've known along the years is uh, they've been family and friends and slave labor <laughs> you know pretty much whoever we could con into it and for some reason they keep coming back it must be you guys I don't know but you know certainly not me three months <laughs> I didn't get a <laughs> That's Karen Lehman. Uh -oh. hey. 
Oh my gosh. That was Kurt. Yeah, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't go back. It's a video. You have to look fast. Call out their names if you recognize them. Armando. And Paul. <laughs> Some of these were actually from the show and a half in Philadelphia. Okay, there's Kurt again. This is back in San Jose. There's Clarence. Clarence was supposed to be here this weekend. Oh. 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 Lee Lee. Yeah. This is in Philadelphia. You do look the same. I told you. I've been accused of that before. This, that is right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, unfortunately, one of the things in timeless means definitions is without time. Okay, so there you go. All right, so so where'd we go next? All right, outdoor advertising can't beat it. Tarawa. 